welcome to another episode of The Meta. I'm your host, Jay Larson, and uh, rejoining the podcast this week uh, on a triumphant return, we have Conan Jennings. Hello, Conan. Hi, uh, thanks for having me. Hey, you bet. Uh, so, Conan, you, you just won the Warfare Weekend Invitational, and so we wanted to have you on to talk about that and go over, I guess, stuff in general since the uh, big update. Um, but before we do, uh, can you go ahead and uh, give yourself an introduction for the people who, who didn't hear your previous podcast? Uh, yeah, sounds good. Hi, I'm uh, Conan. I play War Machine out of the uh, Ohio area meta, the Swarm meta, and um, I'm mainly a uh, Kador player, as is probably obvious by now, and the results and stuff. Could I be messing around with like some Crucible Guard and Signar now with all the changes and stuff? But Kador's always been my favorite. Yeah, that's a good way to start it. All right, well, um, real quick, just a little bit on the format for the show this week. Uh, we'll, we'll do an interview with Conan for about 45 or 50 minutes, um, and that'll be free to everyone. And then there will be a bonus episode that'll be about the same length that is for people who are patrons of the podcast. Um, we try to do two of the community podcasts a month, and then one with a private press staffer and one that I do with uh, Will Hungerford about his continuing adventures. So uh, if you subscribe to the podcast, you'll get to listen to the bonus content that we do with Conan, and you'll also be able to join the Discord and contribute to the questions that we're going to be asking. All right, so uh, it is. let's just dive into uh, the questions that, that we have for you, Conan. Sounds good. Uh, so right out of the bat, missing tasks with the hard hitting questions. Uh, he says, "Do you think Vlad Two needs a nerf, given you won without feeding?" Um. Uh, uh, well, I don't think the winning without feeding really has anything to do with Vlad Two strength. Uh, that the final scenario came down to a fifty fifty of um. Uh, what was that? I believe we played spread the net. Or it was almost Recon 2. Recon 2 would have been a very hard fight for me against that Balder 2 list when I can't spread out and score the scenario. And, of course, winning the role there was why I was able to do that that way. Because I was able to score first, go up get go up the 2-0 that Michael basically couldn't prevent without giving away something. And then that was how I was able to score out the attrition. So, no. I don't think the uh, Vlad 2 had much to do with it. That was just uh, a lot of dudes on spread the net versus a list that couldn't quite do the scenario pieces. But Markle's a really good player, and he knew that the uh, Kruger list would have a really hard time into the Vlad list. That Balder 2 list is actually kind of somewhat teched for Vlad, because it's very hard to kill one of those World Wraths, because none of your um, spells work for it. You can't Brittle Frost them. You can't Brittle Frost the... Uh, Battle Engine either, because it's also immune to cold. So you need to get a Void in range, and then just throw a Jack and as many Weavers into it into one World Wrath as possible in order to have a chance at killing it. And then the other one in the Deaths will k- kill most of that stuff back. So it's a hard fight. I just got a good scenario and uh, won the roll, of course, which always helps. Uh, next question from Missing Pass, he says, uh, Do you think there's a future in Armored Core, or at the very least Sorcia 3, dragging Mana Wars into another theme? Um... I don't know. I don't really. I need. I just said it's been such a short amount of time during the update. I don't yeah. hold two weeks to prepare for warfare that I just haven't put much thought into other lists or themes yet. Like armored core are cheap enough now that I think there's definitely something there. Uh, whether it's with Sorcerer three or you swap Vlad two over there or something, I'm unsure yet. I don't even know what theme Sorcerer three would want to play in because like tankers and stuff are still really good in armored core. And you get Behemoth there now, so you don't really need to go to Jaws or something. But you can go try her in Jaws or somewhere. It's really unfortunate that you can't take her and Sorcerer Zero, which would be the main benefit of going to like Jaws or Winter Guard Command. So definitely need more testing with that list, so I'd say. But I know there's some spicy uh, Kodiak and Behemoth builds floating around online with her. All right, so the next set of questions come from Zach Witten. Um, first off, he says, uh, does the Sheridan still have that weird smell? I'm not going to lie, I have terrible allergies and have no clue. No clue? Okay. Well, he says, uh, are you aware that all Sheridans have that smell? I'm guessing you might not be aware of that. No, no, <laughs> this is this is in fact news to me. Okay. Uh, so his next question is, can you go through your list pairing, 
plus what they did. Okay. Yeah, sure. So my last pairing was a uh, Vlad 2 Wolves of Winter Doom Reaver list paired with uh, Vlad 3 with um, in Where's the Old Faith designed to be very much an anti-shooting list with a bunch of solos, two minute archons, two champions, a victor and a dervish for um, the victor as your main uh, do work piece, the dervish because you need a smaller jack to run around and do scenario with. And sometimes he's a good missile with Infernal Machine. And then uh, Initiates, Darton, and Choir. And that list's whole play is between Vlad's Windwall, Choir, Hand of Fate, and the Victor, and Seven Shield Guards. You just, you, uh, you need to have a um, solid, anti, very solid anti-shooting core that'll drop into, I'm not sure what shooting list I'm actually scared of with it. Not much like it all. Like Sloan and stuff can't even play against it because they don't have enough magical attacks when your entire army well, is, uh, the, when they'll auto miss your entire army, it's rough. Cruz Bogard would probably be the hardest matchup for that list actually right now. And basically, and then the Vlad 2 list was four units of Weavers. Uh, Vlad had Marauder and Ruin. I had, uh, two Colden Lords, two Void Archons, a Thamorite Archon, and one Grey Lord Escort. So it was basically I t- my old li- my old list got a few points lost a few points on the archons and I couldn't requisition butcher four anymore so I dropped him and I I dropped the adjunct and I dropped one escort in order to also fit a thamorite archon in the list because I thought they came out very solid out of the changes they're a really consistent range piece now and that's really helpful for the list to have in a lot of matchups. Because even if even if you're in, uh, like shooting at engaged models to try and unclog them, aiming aiming rat aims to rat nine and then has rerolls on every attack. That'll hit a lot of stuff even in combat. It's quite a just solid piece to run around with the list or put on a flank to hold a flag because it'll kill the other the person sitting on the enemy's flag pretty well while it's at it. So yeah, that was basically I knew I wanted to play the Vlad two list into most matchups. I had a very specific list of things that scared Vlad two, like lots of lightning leaps. Uh, Sloan, uh, basically Signar in general, and or and uh, certain builds of Kruk, of uh, Crucible Guard, like uh, Double Wireless or Sylvestro, lots of sprays, lots of AOEs, stuff that'll just wipe all the weavers off the table. And then if I did so, if they had something I was scared of, Vlad 2, Vlad 3 comes out. Like in the semis, I was, uh, Vlad 2 wouldn't do well into uh, 30 brigands preying on all the Doom Weavers. So I Drop the uh, Where's the Old Faith list into Wisheth and ended up being the right call, obviously. So yeah, just play Vlad in every matchup unless it's uh, really bad for it. Then you play Vlad 3. It's basically how my pairing process went every game. So I guess one question I have with the, the list pair that, that you played. Uh, you were on the podcast around six months ago, and uh, the, the list you were playing at that time were uh, fairly similar. Is, is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. A few model changes since then in both. Yeah, yeah, yeah you mentioned uh, like the Butcher 4 change, etc. Um, oh, and Cossites. Cossites are crazy. Play Cossites, guys. If you can play Cossites in your scheme, you have no excuse not to have at least one unit. So, I guess one of the questions I have for you is uh, your your list obviously kept the, the Void Archons and the Manite Archons. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how big of an impact did you feel like the changes that those models had uh, impacted your list. Okay, so the Menad Archon doesn't change too much in my list because I'm not, I'm trying, my whole goal is not to let it get shot at anyway. And its biggest weakness now is it's more vulnerable to shooting because I'm 18. But I basically want all my opponents trying to shoot at me and stuff soon shield guarded for them to get pissed off somewhere in the process and then they get their 15 inch vengeance threat. So they still fulfill that goal exactly how i want them to and then i was actually questionable in the voids because if the voids lost the ability to teleport off of the assault shot like they uh, originally were written up now they can only lose the ability to tell up to teleport if you fail the charge i probably wouldn't have played them because it would have been a huge liability to accidentally kill your charge target with the assault shot and maybe get stuck there but as they change now they're yes they're nerfed that losing dual attack definitely lets them dig less deep but the models are still fantastic, and they'll just walk up, spray something, teleport back, or charge, assault, spray something, get an auto in, teleport back. And having three sources of Entropic in the list is still a big deal in several matchups. So I'd say Harbinger and Trolls, you're going to want all the Entropic you can get. So the the follow-up question that Zach has with your list, um, he says, 
what were the things that uh, had scared you when you were creating your list pairing? Uh, any matchups? I um, let's see. Before the update, I was terrified of Rhett, much less so now. Try it's it's hard for Tridents to shoot Doom Weavers without a bunch of power tokens because they do need to boost a lot of those shots a lot of the time. So that definitely got a lot better. And I'm no longer using one uh, a unit per Warden activation. So that's better. But there's still a lot of stuff in, in Rhett that's still scary. Like Electromancers being 5.6 Electroleap shots is terrifying. Uh, Signar, hard for the list. Uh, I actually didn't know, see, in terms of just, like, stuff for the entire pair to be scared of, I wasn't sure how my Haley 1 matchup was. I was very glad to not have to play that and not have to see that across the table. And then another one being um, Crucible Guards, really iffy for my pair, depending on how they build their lists. Because if, if they have lots of trains and stuff, in, if they have, like, a Lucas list that can has enough sprays and answers to the weavers but will also hit hard enough to kill the victor if i drop that list that's when things get iffy because it's all about that right balance if it's like the uh, dude spam gear heart list i'm fine with weavers into that if it's the classic Sylvestro double trains fine with flat three into that just gotta just depends a lot on their pair as well in that matchup so probably crucible guard and signal right now that's the scariest too uh next question from zach he says uh did you eat the Emo's pizza? Thoughts. They eat what pizza? Emo's. It's it's St. Louis pizza. No, I did not have time to get there. I can't okay. say I got my stomach destroyed by fuzzies. It's always a classic. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> uh, next question from, from Zach. He says, uh, how was the competitive game after being effectively shuttered for 18 months? Were games easier, harder? Did people make simple mistakes? Um, I'll just, uh, I think there was definitely some fatigue going in, or, like, uh, unfamiliarity going into the thing. Like, I can't remember the last time I saw JVM clock in an event, and he clocked at the Invitational. Um, definitely just things people were unfamiliar with, or forgetting rules. Uh, you, you have the classic, if you want to see someone learn a rule for the first time, watch the recording of the... Uh, last chance qualifier semifinals where Jason Watt learns how exactly Thanks Thanks one feet has changed as a Ravagor eats Lucas. <laughs> That's a there's definitely some unfamiliarity. But at the same time, if you look, uh, Nate like uh, Nate, Michael, and I have been traveling, grinding a lot of events this year, and then all three of us made top four. So you can definitely see that the people who have put the time to travel out and play this year definitely were um, feeling the results of their experience. So, yeah, definitely some rust around the field going into this event. Yeah, I, I am hopeful slash excited to, I mean, there will, as, as usual, there will probably be a little bit of a, a pause during the holiday season and then uh, pick back up. Uh, go to LVO and Captain Con, people. I'm going to try and do yeah, both. there you go. There you go. Um, all right, so uh, the next question, um, Zach asks, what faction surprised you the most at the tournament? Signar, the fact that it wasn't any of it to me is insane. Striker 1 paired with any of the Haley's is such an insane list combination right now that I will definitely be trying and testing in the future. And then uh, Siege is still also... In that Siege list was great, and then, and then just got like 8 points. Or you can go do the uh, Canadian... Uh, themeless siege madness that they got brewing up there and try that but now the Th signar's underrepresentation to me was madness that faction is terrifying right now um the reverse question that zach has is uh what faction disappointed you slash was surprisingly to deal with hmm. um i mean surprisingly easy to deal with has to just go to menoth right now people have not figured out how to build post change fm yet i know that that malachis uh, list won the uh, LCQ and it was a solid list and he had some good events over the weekend but I had a pretty solid smashing of it in round two of the Invitational and uh, I think the uh, Menoth players are still uh, reeling a bit and trying to figure out which directions to head. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that area? I mean you're, you're not a Menoth player but you do play <laughs> Yes, yeah, I own a lot and... of Menoth models. I technically do play Menoth. Played it in a hot minute but I know there's there's something out there like you have some good cast yeah you still have great casters like Fiora Four 
Seve One, Harbinger, and Malchus actually now have just three. You have great casters. People are just going to have to figure out how to do it. Like Seve One, Seve Zero being five points still requisitionable after the changes is madness. That model is fantastic. Someone's going to figure out some way to do insane damage. Uh, there's blast immunity is like mostly gone unless like you're girded or with with us. So uh, Judicator's back on the menu. Start throwing out pie plates again. There's something's gonna be good. It's it's gonna it might take them a little minute, but there's gonna be some spice coming out there. All right. So next set of questions are from Tokenator. Uh, he says apparently you were Ben Beckman Padawan while he was in the states. Uh, <laughs> What have been the um, most useful lesson he has taught you about War Machine? Oh, okay. So, that is true. Ben was part of my local meta when he was in the States, and we, play, oh, we played a lot of games during lockdown. We were still just meeting up weekly to play a few games together. And, um, basically, so, uh, just good, solid practice habits lead to great War Machine plays. Uh, when Ben and I are playing, I didn't do, like, take-me-backs. If I forgot to upkeep something, I forgot to upkeep it. Remember your rules, that kind of thing. It just forms really good habits when you're like, when you're not always fixing your little positioning mistakes. Like, a minute or two activations later, you realize it, and you're like, next game, you're processing that. And I think getting punished like that a bunch, and then eventually getting down on it. I know my control, my maintenance. I know all my steps and stuff like that. And if I don't, I'll communicate it with my opponent clearly. And that kind of thing really helps you long term. That, uh, I don't play a game of War Machine without a clock, which also helps immensely because I won several games sub one minute at this event. Or on on those games where the clock was low, was it? Was your opponent kind of similarly timed or? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. So I'd say I won, uh, let's see, so it would have been round three over Brent and round four in the semis. Both rounds, I won sub three minutes and my opponent was sub 20 seconds. So mm. just having that few extra minutes from solid decision making where in the final, that's enough time to charge with an Archon, clear a flag and score another point. When your opponent's no longer playing the game, and that and that's what it comes down to sometimes. Those one or two point swings where you can score it out when your opponent's done activating. Because at that point, you don't have to score a five over. You just need to lead when your opponent can't play the game. Um. All right. So, next question from Tokenator. Um. You've touched on this a little bit, but we can dig a little deeper. Uh, he says. Uh, what's your opinion of the Void and Thamorite Archons, and has Warfare Weekend changed your opinion on them? Uh, I think I would play that exact same Vlad 2 list for a while now, because, oh boy, are uh, are they still just great. Anyone anyone who's like, they're garbage now, play that model, please. It still teleports, sprays, kills stuff, gets souls, and then teleports behind the woods, back to a flag, something to do it again next turn. It still walks and sprays 16 inches by default with a booster ball, and then it actually can. It won't get to teleport, but it still can assault spray 19 inches if it wants to. It's a, it's a very long distance for a boostable PAL-14 to cover if you need it to, to get that last chip point on something. I killed a kicky monk that way at the Invitational. Just hit those, uh, what was it, a boosted uh, 12. Easy, right? 50-50. So yeah, and then Thamorites are fantastic. I will be taking Thamorites many, many Kador and Signar lists where they are allowed. That is a very good nine point mark option right now. And just due to the, not that it's like, it's, I wouldn't even say it's OP. I'd just say it's consistent. The model, the, that was the biggest reason no one took it before is because if you rolled two shots or if you rolled one shot two turns in a row, the model was useless. And just having consistent shots now. Even if it's not getting insane explosions and RFPing stuff, and sometimes it'll absolutely pop off, just having three shots a turn at PAL-14, what you need from that model sometimes. Uh, I walked, I, uh, see, I was doing a practice game against Nate. I uh, got a Colden Lord up to Brittle Frost Zuriel when he had Elusive up. I was like, hmm, I need to do a little point so these feet of Doom Doomweavers can boost and guarantee the finish. So the uh, Thamorite Archon just walked over and did, like, almost half his HP. <laughs> Uh, dice off. What's that? Dice off one. So yeah, that model. That model is very good. 
play with Archons, guys. Archons are not going anywhere. Archons are tougher to fit in lists, but Archons are still fantastic. And that's awesome, because they're awesome models. Um, so we... Previously, I had asked some about the Void Archon and about the uh, Menite Archon. Um, one of the things that Tokenator asked about was the uh, Thamorite Archon. Uh, was was it one that you that saw much play uh, from what you saw at, at the event? And what was kind of your impression on that model? Um, so as I said, the model for me just did work over the weekend, despite Brent just one-shotting it with a bite bringer. That happened, unfortunately. Uh. But, um, I did not play against one, but I also didn't play against factions that were legal in. I expect there to be two to three in most Signar pairs. Um, Crucible Guard, Crucible Guard players, put a Thamorite Archon in your Lucas list. It's, oh, it's nuts. And that the, and then, uh, I know you're giving up Anastasia, and I know you all like to go first, but we will still plenty. Trust me, it's all I have in Warriors of the Old Faith. But yeah, no. P- try those Thamorite Archons, guys. I think you'll all be presently surprised by how just, not like they're not going to have they're okay they can they're very rarely going to have an insane turn against an opponent that knows what they're doing because they're not going to clump up for your shots but they're still just just use the consistency just three rat three rat seven rewillable shots is enough on that model all right um so next uh well i guess real quick before we move on um would you say that out of the changes that happened to the archons do you feel like the the Thamorite was the one that gained the most ground, or do you think that that... Uh, oh, no, goes 100%. Just... Not even close. In terms of ground gains, yes. Is it the best Archon? No, that probably still goes to the Defile now, or maybe the Blight, because they're both nuts. But yeah, in terms yeah. of Im- improvement, yes, the Thamorite's improvement is massive. Shock consistency is king. All right, so... Uh, follow-up question with uh, Tokenator. Um, he, you, you've already said that you've been happy with the voids. Um, he, he has a question about the um, acolyte, the thermite acolyte. Am I sorry? Uh, yeah. Then like the we worked. Yeah. Yeah. What about how? Did, how did that uh, perform in your pairing? Wait, thermite uh, acolyte? You mean uh, advocate? No, advocate. Yeah. I didn't have one. Oh, okay. So say I didn't have one, and I think it'll be a good model, like, play it with Zerkova, but I have not gotten the chance to test it yet, so sorry, I can't help you there. Uh, Simon, uh, Simon W. says, were there lists that you were afraid of but that you didn't have to play into? Oh, yeah, 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 Haley won. Thank God I didn't have to play against Haley won. <laughs> because so, what, I have what to, is it I about Haley won? I have to Warriors the old faith. I have to. Uh, Doom Mirrors will get 100% shot off the table. And then I just have to play the game with a uh, speed four army and a speed two victor. And uh, that's a ton of fun, let me tell you. <laughs> um, next question from Simon. He says, uh, how did the dynamic update impact your lists and your decision to play them? Um, so I, I wasn't going to be changing my list too much. Because one, I had been focused on painting these for a while now and did not have time to jump to something else. And two, I was still very comfortable on them. I did have, I did definitely make minor changes to the both. Like in the Vlad, uh, three list, I dropped my Outriders to fit in Cossites because, let me tell you, Cossites are fantastic. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the one round I played at the Invitational, they walked on, killed, uh, let's see, three solos the turn I walked on, or was it four solos? Like, and then the next turn they advanced into his back line and just kept murdering support for the rest of the game. Oh, I'm getting, I, I, uh, I'm officially, thanks to Faye, we're getting a rule change, because turns out right now, like, some people probably know this, but I, it had never come up for me before, because I don't play crows very often. Uh, objectives, you can't get the backstrike bonus against, but you sure as hell can still backstab an objective. They technically have a facing, and if your opponent doesn't declare it or mark it at the start of the game, it's straightforward. So, yeah, Cossites just come on and are, uh, uh, boosted dice off sixes on an objective. That's sure cool. Uh, yes, that is that is something. <laughs> Don't worry, that won't be there much longer. If I have anything to say about it. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of truth. yeah, uh, speaking of cosites, uh, you had mentioned previously that uh, they're a, a big winner from the, the update. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have winner. any other any thoughts on on playing them or uh, where where people should consider them? 
uh, any list that you can play them at least one min unit. I'm gonna be trying two in some Jaws list. I got some spice like stuff like you like uh, Butcher Three or stuff where you really want to run a tight ship and then just using these backstabbing monsters that threat nine inches off, nineteen inches off the side to push people towards the middle. I'm just gonna be trying stuff like that. I thought about trying to fit a second unit into the Warriors of the Old Faith, but the points really aren't there. You start hunt, cutting hard into work models because you're sacrificing a champion or an archon at that point. So it didn't really work out for me. But if you can fit, but I'd highly recommend tossing one unit in wherever, which is two themes, but go wild. Um, next question from Simon W. Um, he says, would you have played roughly these lists if the update hadn't happened? Um, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. They would, have been, they would have been similar. I probably would have still been on just my old list. I was quite comfortable on that pairing going into it. So I'd say, and I, and, uh, the, I needed a strange bedfellows answer, so Vlad Fate was 100% coming along. Um, speaking of strange bedfellows, it was, you know, during the pandemic, uh, it was kind of the, uh, most popular online list. Um, and post pandemic playing in person, I'm not sure how many people actually had the models compared to versus online. And, and also there were, some obviously some changes from the update that brought things back in line but mm -hmm. um i guess what did you what was kind of the presence of strange bedfellows at, at warfare weekend it did not exist i don't think it was in a single pairing in either event which i think is like people were tired of it and were glad to be on other things but if you oh, want to yeah. be competitive yeah. i still think it's a bit of an overreaction because boy is that there's Aurora 2 in Tesla, who's still a scary caster. I mean, that, that's generally one of the uh, um, common traits of the community, is it seems like anytime there's an adjustment, there's a very, I don't know if I want to say overreaction, but there's definitely a strong reaction to, yeah, that, <laughs> to any think, change I that think happens. people are tired of that list. It was a very unhealthy list to play and play against, so it's good to see it toned down. Do you think that... Uh, once uh, there's there's more shifts in the meta, people are maybe a little less tired of playing it. Do you think that it's there's going to be a place for the list in the competitive scene? And if so, do you do you think that the adjustments that they made got it in kind of the the right area, or uh, is it still really strong? Maybe over to or did it get nerfed too too much, uh, you know, etc. I honestly need to see it played more before I'm making too many full calls on it. I think the I think the Aurora One list is is uh, maybe uh, is really gutted by the requisition changes, like uh, losing the three units of negations. The uh, points for the Aurora, Aurora One list just do not work. But I think the Aurora Two list will cut st I will uh, get worked out and then we'll come back. And I I'm hoping it comes out just like strong, not OP, and feels fine. To play against because well, like by the end of it people who were used to it didn't weren't like hateful on other sides it was just people who didn't have the experience into it or people who didn't bring a list in the pair for it were just getting would just get absolutely crushed and it, it how much it demanded an answer was the issue so i'm hoping it comes out as a solid strong list that people can just be like see it in a pair and be like all right that's an option not see it and be like, all right, I need to sacrifice half of my list just to be able to deal with this one thing. All right, so next question from Conan. Uh, he says, oh, sorry, uh, from BCCB, he says, I've heard through a smattering of podcasts the opinion that Kador was the big winner of the October update. Uh, do you agree or disagree with that statement? Oh, I'm unsure. Because, like, Cossites got real good, but I don't play anything else in Kator besides the flats, so... <laughs> we'll see. Like, I know a lot of people have a soft spot for Behemoth. Like, you can play him now, I guess. Like, he's not a third of your army before doing anything else, but that's still a 20-point check that ties to a lot of stuff <laughs> pretty easily. So, we'll see. I think Kator got some nice stuff, but to say they're the overall winner might be pushing it a little in my eyes. Uh, I guess, what would you say are potentially some of the factions that might be contenders for uh, that position? You're going to hear me say Signar a lot this podcast, and uh, it's still Signar, as I think 
as uh, all of their li- all of their top list just got around eight points, and um, other stuff got insanely buffed. People will play against Haley One, another name I'm going to mention a lot, and we'll realize that wow, there's a reason that ability was command only, not control. <laughs> Besides that, um, I think CG's looking healthy. They were before. Kador got some good stuff. Troll bloods are massive winners. Just look, when you look at their beasts, troll blood, troll bloods are going to be in a great spot once people start building with the new stuff. Circle to a lesser extent as well. Poor skinwalkers. Uh, all right. So next question from BCCB. He says, um, of all the changes that Kador received, the ones I keep finding myself going back to are Molokov two. Uh, where do you see him being most effective? Please say armored core. <laughs> and is there a world where he can be part of a competitive pairing? Um, I'm not sure anything can be part of a competitive pairing. Uh, as for where he'll be best, you got options. Like, I don't, I do not actually think the like full Chaosi list is optimal. I think he does like cost sites. I'm unsure about crows with him, but something like just Armored Core or Jaws Jack list, or just something in using and just considering the spell to be a hit buff. An occasionally anti-defensive tech will be uh probably enough. I do think he's that's it's like just combat is too strong of a spell not to do good somewhere. And I think um if you want to start him, uh, armor course a fine place to do it. I'd definitely be there at Jaws personally. Uh, next question from BCCB. He says, uh, please unload all the thoughts and opinions you can about Karchev two. Uh, what theme does he prefer? What does his bow group look like? How weird would it be? model him with hair, etc. <laughs> Alright, please don't put hair on your card, Jeff. That's all, that's all I'm going to say on that topic. And then, as for the list, I think you know, people are going to try some stuff. Like, someone's going to try and put him in uh, Man of War because uh, Locked Horns works on Shock Troopers and all that, and you're going to try stuff. And um, he changed his... Uh, definitely changed quite a beat. Does he fulfill anything in the Kador pairing for me right now? I'm unsure about that. Definitely need to do him. I'll probably be trying him personally in Jaws first because one cost sites with him really good for getting your opponents into his jack stat ranges. And you want Source of Zero, of course. Fantastic model in there. And then I'll probably be, uh, I was going to originally think about like with the old feet, Marauder Spam, but I'm not sure that's it anymore. I'd probably run a balanced battle group, some mix of um, Marauders and Jugs would probably be my go-to. A lot of people like the High Armor Devastator, but I think you want more jacks that can just do more work. It's so like, I don't know, two jugs for Marauders or something might be where I start with it and see how that goes. Throw in some cheap uh, cheap solos like Manhunters and Yuri to score flags. And then uh, maybe just slap a Thamorite Archon in there because that model's good. And Infantry Clearing is always something a jack spam list needs. So get one of those, get a unit of cost sites, and you're basically at a list right there. And uh, don't forget your uh, Grey Lord adjunct, because, uh, boy, would it be nice not to just lose to a cloud wall. <laughs> so if you were doing a card show of two lists similar to that, uh, what's another caster that you think you would probably consider with him in a pairing, and what kind of build in that list you'd work well? I was going to pair something with Karchev 2. So you got to think about what stuff Karchev 2 doesn't want. A bunch of hard-hitting Weapon Master infantry tough for him, because that will still crack through it. So I'd probably bring something that can answer that. Um, so maybe so something uh, with a lot of infantry removal, you could go like, uh, winner, go, go, uh, two complete skew list would be an option. You go like Winter Guard Command all the dudes. And with your uh, elite jack heavy armor cracking card chef list, you could you could easily go a classic and just be like Vlad two and prevent present a noble option and have that as the pairing option, or you could go um, something that can take the hits and blows and then so you might be like that might be where you slide in like a Malakov with a Victor for open fire and all that. So you have the infantry clearing with him and then you you get some. Spice in there of stuff that will uh, love his feet, like man of war, uh, like uh, I don't know. Some people like the uh, no knockdown tough doom weavers that walk behind them if they make their tough or stuff like that, and then just that backstab on those. He's, I'll say he's gonna have a lot of options, so something with him might be where I try first. 
because uh, I love I love me an open fire Victor. That's a lot of fiery pie plates. All right. So uh, next question from uh, BCCB. He says uh, Strakov one and Strakov two uh, viable or just good fun? Good fun. You assassinate someone with Strakov. Because he has, oh god, what's the name of that spell? Where something in your battle, where if a model kills something in your battle, it gets to make a full advance. Overrun? Or yes. Overrun. You'll kill, you'll assassinate someone with Overrun, and it'll be a lot of fun, but uh, they're still more cute than good. Okay. Struck off um, 2, uh, I will say his one cute thing is he is still just immune to an Archangel because he is immune to fire sack ponds, so have some fun with that. Alright. Um. I think we're going to go ahead and pause there on this episode. And right, sounds good. We will be doing part two here shortly. Um, as always, check out discountgamesinc.com for your gaming needs and subscribe to the, the Patreon to support the podcast and receive more content. Uh, to wrap things up, Conan wanted to thank you for uh, sharing your time, sharing your knowledge with us. All right, thanks for having me up. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening.